The system thinks you're stupid. They think you're morons. And I'm about to cover one of the biggest examples of this in modern history. One of the biggest hoaxes I've ever seen. Anyone who's followed the news for the last few decades, anyone who's researched admitted mainline history knows that Al-Qaeda was CIA created with the backing and support of the Saudi Arabians and the Israelis, as well as Pakistani intelligence. Zbigniew Brzezinski's written two books bragging that in 79, they created the group, had them attack the Russians to get them to then invade Afghanistan so that the Soviets could have their, quote, Vietnam. This is a fact. And the Muslim brigades uh, being controlled by British intelligence goes back to Lawrence of Arabia. And then Hitler took over the Middle East during the first few years of World War II, and they went over to his control. But the hoax is that in the attack against the Serbs to take over Serbia, it was admitted Al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden running those operations. And then NATO came in and bombed all of Serbia, and they were forced to give up one-third of their land basically to Albanian-backed Muslim rebels who were calling themselves al-Qaeda. Then, of course, we have uh, the attacks of 9-11 and the Newsweek headlines about hijackers trained at U.S. bases and the dean of the defense language school coming out and saying that they were trained at U.S. bases. And then you have uh, the Times of London as well reporting on the airlift of evil. Months after the Afghanistan war started, U.S. military and British military captured thousands of top al-Qaeda and Taliban commanders, and they would be ordered to release them and fly them out into Pakistan to start the next wave of destabilization. So al-Qaeda on record is a CIA slash British slash Israeli slash uh, Saudi Arabian creation. And they're used all over the world. And, and then you add to that Fox News AP last October 2010 reporting, Amor al alaki the guy they're now saying is more powerful than Osama bin Laden, trained in the U.S., ran the underwear bombing, uh, the Christmas Day event, ran the Fort Hood shooting, ran the Times Square attack. Uh, the list goes on and on. The shoe bomber. He's always handling these patsies, and it turns out he's secretly hanging out at the Pentagon when he's been on the most wanted list and getting orders and having dinner with the Secretary of the Army and top brass while he's on the news as the head of Al-Qaeda. Julie Kurtz joins us from Washington. You've got to be kidding me. Yeah, here's what we know. Fox News has learned that Anwar al-Awlaki, the American Muslim cleric, remember him with a worldwide following, dined with military brass at the Pentagon within months of the 9-11 attacks. Now, you add to this hoax now that the openly Western-funded rebels in the east of Libya, and I'm not saying Gaddafi's a good guy. The point is the West overthrew Egypt and its own puppet to the east of Libya. They've brought down Tunisia. Now it's admitted that British special forces were inside eastern Libya even before the latest rebellion started. So Al-Qaeda rebels, and it's admitted that the head of the Libyan rebels was trained by the CIA for decades in Virginia, and he admits that he's working with Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda. And so I have to get up here and either say no to this hoax and expose the facts or say I'm a bad American. Because I refuse to say that now Al-Qaeda are freedom fighters and great people. I must refuse uh, to be ignorant and not face the facts of history. But the average gullible person out there who buys into the system will make the decision to say, oh, I guess Al-Qaeda is good. It's like 1984. We've never been at war with East Asia. And the next day, we've always been at war with East Asia. And if you pointed out that, well, you said we were at war with them yesterday, but we're not at war today, and that we were never at war then you get arrested in that system. And that's basically where this country and where the West is going, where the system thinks we're so stupid that Western intelligence is in the east of Libya using radical Muslim Al-Qaeda backed out of Saudi Arabia and arms out of Saudi Arabia and Egypt to destabilize Gaddafi. Gaddafi then fights armed force trying to overthrow the government, and our media calls them protesters. Protesters who had tanks and missile launchers and Western weapons. Oh, the poor protesters. And the media lied and said he strafed protesters. Turned out that wasn't true. The media lied and said that he'd, he'd run to Venezuela to try to give the rebels support, think they would win. It doesn't mean that there aren't groups in Libya who don't like the goofy 
uh, dictator Muammar Gaddafi. But Muammar Gaddafi is independent and has tried to build a strong Africa outside of the New World Order. And that's why he must be brought down. He doesn't have an international private central bank running his country. They have their own central bank. And that's why the system is doing this. And they think we have no memory where they're telling us Al-Qaeda is horrible. We've got to take all your liberties in America because they may attack you any minute. The end of the Bill of Rights, freedom is dead. America surrenders and gives up all its rights to homeland security to keep us safe because of Al-Qaeda. But then Al-Qaeda, who wants to overthrow the secular Arab leader, Gaddafi, is being brought in to do this. And then we're being told it's humanitarian and we've got to bomb them and attack them to protect them. I mean, think about it, folks. Amr al-Awlaki, the number one guy under Bin Laden, secretly hanging out at the Pentagon. The Taliban and al-Qaeda being flown out to safety uh, in the first few months of the Afghan war to start the next crisis. Al-Qaeda being used to attack the Serbs. When the Serbs fight back, oh, it's humanitarian, we've got to bomb them. They just move al-Qaeda around all over the world, call them humanitarian freedom fighters if anybody resists them, and then the UN and NATO comes in and bombs the daylights out of them. But at least with the attack... Uh, in the 90s against Serbia, they went and got congressional authorization for force. At least Bush with his illegal wars, because they were still wars of aggression, but he went and got the Congress to sign off on it, wasn't engaged in that form of brazen treason. Obama, less than 48 hours after the UN gave that resolution to invade, openly, in front of everyone, he ordered the U.S. military to start bombing and firing cruise missiles when out in the open, the U.N. had given the order and Obama hadn't even consulted Congress. This is a huge issue that's taking place here, my friends. And I hope you'll research the fact that Al-Qaeda is an arm of the globalist. Al-Qaeda is an arm of the New World Order. Al-Qaeda is a system that the New World Order uses to menace civilizations into giving up their liberties in the name of protection and also to go stir up revolutions and wars to then pose as freedom fighters so the globalists have an excuse to come in and take over countries. This is 21st century imperialism. And Al-Qaeda is the key set piece on this game of chess to bring us into the world government. They are a creation of the private banking cartels who are waging wars against the nation state and all basic liberties that defend the rights of the indigenous populations of the nation states. Al-Qaeda is CIA, is MI6, is Mossad, is Saudi Arabian intelligence. And they've caught British SAS dressed up like Al-Qaeda sh shooting at police in Basra to get Sunnis and Shiites killing each other. I mean, Al-Qaeda is the Swiss army knife of destabilization. They are that magic go-to tool that's used to foment the crisis so the globalists have the excuse to offer the solution. We've broken down one of the biggest modern ongoing hoaxes in history where you're un-American if you don't support the freedom fighters of Al-Qaeda. Well, I don't support them, and I don't agree with what Ronald Reagan said about them, saying that they were founding father material. I don't like Al-Qaeda. Now, you may hate me because I don't love Al-Qaeda. I'm not going to apologize. I'm sorry. I hate Al-Qaeda, and I hate their handlers even more. Ask yourselves, what are you doing in this time of great challenge? What are you doing to unlock minds?